Hello and welcome to Banks and Markets. This is Benham. This video is about portfolio performance evaluation techniques. I have made several videos on different portfolio performance evaluation techniques, defining and explaining them. But in this video, I would like to use those techniques to compare and contrast the performance of a portfolio with that of benchmark. So you can see that there are various numbers in this Excel file, but ultimately what I have done is I have calculated the returns of a portfolio for different weeks from the date 17th of February 2020 all the way to this date and uh, therefore I have been able to come to this point where I have portfolios return and benchmark return. I also have the portfolios value in amount and also benchmark value. Okay, so first thing is finding out the holding period return. So this is simple, it is just to say, if I have in my portfolio, in the end, this value, and in the beginning, if I had invested this much money, which is 1 million, what is the return for holding this investment for all that time period? So that's what we do to get the holding period return or holding period yield. And we can do the same for the benchmark which is going to be what is the benchmark value at the end divided by what was it at the start which is this take away one okay now you will recall that this portfolios return weekly can also help get the same number if you just apply the approach which is 1 plus r1 times r2 times r3 and shown all the way to week 12 and take we one and this is going to give you the same 0.89 percent remember you just need to press control shift and enter not just enter okay so that will give you the same result yeah now that was holding period return now what about the arithmetic return that's easy to find arithmetic return is simply the average okay so therefore equal average open bracket and we find the average and average for the benchmark as well we can see the portfolio is performing better as compared to the benchmark in uh, this aspect let's find the analyzed one which is equal one plus the periodic rate of return that is weekly and assuming there are 52 number of trading weeks in a year power 52 take away one so we get four percent for the portfolio and 2.67 percent for the benchmark so in this we find that the portfolio is performing better so let's say a high now let's do the geometric mean return which I have explained in my previous video why this is a better indicator. I've also produced the differences between the geometric and arithmetic in those videos so you can find it in those videos. But here geometric return would be equal product 1 plus all the rate of return power there are 12 so 1 over 12 12 weekly return take away 1 so control shift enter then gives you this number here okay so that's what we have done to obtain this particular calculation related to geometric return okay so now we can do the same for the benchmark um, so it means I will just copy and paste it 
in the case of benchmark to get the geometric mean return for the benchmark weekly okay so that's it now I can again convert this into analyzed which is simply I can simply copy this paste here as this and again in this term as well this is recorded higher higher I mean if, if weekly is higher of course the analyzed will also be higher let me put H just for the weekly for now yeah now then I have cumulative return which is simply the summation of all weekly return as this and the same can be done for the benchmark which is this again the portfolio is performing better in that respect but now let's see the fact that this cumulative return can also be calculated as equal portfolio return for the first week and then adding for the second week third week and so on so we get the same number here 0 0.90 which is what we found here 0 0.90 now we need to find out the annual risk-free rate uh, because in order to apply other indicators such as SAR, trainer Jensen information we need risk-free rate so the risk-free rate is important and uh, I just went to the website and I found that uh, the risk-free rate can be found risk-free rate free I had done this uh, just before oh yeah trading economics will give me the risk-free rate and I'm taking the 10-year government bond for UK it is not 0.29 as of today which is 25th of April 2020 so that's 2 point not 0.29 percent so I will type in not 0.29 percent that is the yield so and this will remain the same for the benchmark now I just need to convert it into weekly which is going to be 1 plus this rate power uh, 52 weeks in a year so that is what we get will remain the same for the benchmark now we need a standard deviation we can see simply tdv dot s that gives us the risk or the volatility of the portfolio and therefore it is this number here and we can compare it with compare it with the benchmark and we get this now there is a contrast can you see so we will say l because the volatility lower the better and it is lower for the benchmark yeah now in order to convert it into annual what we need to do is this times square root of 52 and that is annualized standard deviation which is again of course will be higher for the portfolio now we've got excess return excess return is simply the portfolio return minus uh, portfolio return minus the risk-free rate and therefore this is excess return and this is the, the excess return for the benchmark okay um, so we get what's happening here let me change this format into the same it's not changing uh, okay okay so if I change this uh, there's something funny in my computer just the format yeah all right so this has now worked okay now the four composite measures would be calculated first which are SAR, trainer Jensen and information ratio so first SAR ratio simply excess return divided by the standard deviation okay so this is the excess return okay and now dividing the excess return by standard deviation we get the sharp we do the same for the benchmark and in terms of sharp as we predicted you see it is lower so the risk adjusted return for the benchmark is much better now beta is simply the slope or the gradient of the line and we need the the returns from the portfolio which are this number here and the return from the benchmark those number here and therefore we get the 
beta which is 4.4263 so we also have the beta there now the beta for the market of course will be equal to 1 because it is the slope for the market with the market yeah so therefore let me change this to af and again af here so we get 1 now trainer would therefore be excess return divided by the beta so it's a low number and let's see higher the better we said and this should be higher again for the benchmark given the the higher risk in the case of portfolios return so we can see that trainer of the market is higher therefore portfolio has performed compared to the benchmark weak therefore i am keeping l now basically in terms of alpha it is equal to intercept and in this case again we take the y values which is the portfolio return and the x which is the, the market return therefore we get the intercept so what is it telling us how what is the performance of the manager as compared to that of the market so we can see that here um, it should be zero because when market is neutral what is the benchmark performance okay so that's it in fact we don't even need to calculate the market alpha um, so Jensen alpha is negative the intercept is negative then comes tracking error tracking is error is particularly important when we are uh, taking a passive portfolio management approach so we are trying to mimic the benchmark so this is basically the the standard deviation of the outperformance or the standard deviation of the return differences between the benchmark and the portfolio here i have found those differences as you can see um, this is the portfolio difference return minus the benchmark return it can be either way you can do benchmark return minus portfolio return or portfolio return minus benchmark return anyway here you can see portfolio performed better portfolio performed couldn't perform as good as benchmark portfolio performed better 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 portfolio couldn't perform better couldn't perform better couldn't perform better, couldn't perform better. anyway now I need the tracking error which is the standard deviation of this outperformance so let me find this one out which is equal stdv dot s and then we go up to get the outperformance and that's it I have now tracking error now lower the better if you are following a passive portfolio management strategy uh, because zero or close to zero basically means portfolio's performance is similar to that of the benchmark now information ratio is simply the return differences between the two which is uh, when I say two it is the difference between the portfolio and that of the benchmark so it is not same as access return it is the difference with the benchmark okay so first you find the difference between the the portfolio's return and the benchmark return divided by the tracking error and you get the information ratio okay higher the better and then we've got modified ratio now in this example modified modified SARP ratio in this example the modified SARP ratio will be same as that of the SARP ratio mainly because our excess return is positive when excess return is negative the, the SARP ratio gives counterintuitive result hence we need to resort to modified SARP ratio in this case it would be the same nevertheless we can apply the formula which is equal to excess return divided by the standard deviation and then we need the exponent component and the exponent component is again the excess return divided by the absolute value of 
the axis return which is this and a close bracket we'll get the same number which is 0 0.1335 okay so that's what we get as modified SAR for the benchmark of course you can do it for the sorry for the portfolio you can do it for the benchmark again it is 2.8976 of course we can say this is again L um, again here as well Jensen alpha lower but but generally as I said the, the alpha is alpha okay uh, now in the next video I'll be talking about the remaining indicator just to make this video a sizable one not to exceed certain length so continue to watch my other video to find out about other indicators of portfolio performance thank you very much for watching